In habitats made up of native plants, as compared with areas of non-natives, one always finds larger numbers of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and other forms of fauna, because they all relate to the plant worlds with which they have evolved and now rely on for food, shelter, and structure of the habitat. At Quail Ridge Reserve, a balanced relationship between flora and fauna exists thus making the reserve an invaluable source for researchers interested in studying a less disturbed place in order to understand better what needs to be done to restore places that have been seriously disturbed by humans. It is important to remember that this sort of research, investigating intact models for habitat restoration, is an essential function of undisturbed reserves. In short, reserves such as Quail Ridge Reserve bring benefits beyond the obvious one of preserving plants and animals for future generations to appreciate. It is summer at Quail Ridge Reserve on Lake Berryessa in beautiful Napa County, California. Most flowers have now passed into seed forms and the perennial species are dormant. The Patwin women, like Native American women throughout the North American West, literally cultured and maintained vast flower beds of native plants as part of their food gathering techniques. Subsistence was comparatively easy for California's native peoples. Food was abundant amongst relatively peaceful neighbors. There were neither guns nor horses. There were no buffalo here, but the large tule elk and the wily pronghorned antelope were abundant. Both were bagged only occasionally after great effort on the part of the hunter. Small fires were also used to stimulate fresh and even growth of grasses used in basket making. The women would control the shape and flexibility of the grass, leading to the crafting of more durable and beautiful baskets. Fire also stimulated better growth of grasses, such as Elemus glaucus, the blue wild rye, which were beaten into baskets by the women and later roasted, yielding a grain product for their families. California native perennial grasses once covered 25 million acres of California, nearly one quarter of the state. Grass seed was abundant everywhere. Some native perennials, Melica, Nacella, went dormant during the summer, giving the true original golden hills of California while other species, such as Festuca californica, remained green all summer, even in the absence of rainfall. Valley oak and blue oak are both very dependent on native perennial grasses for their germination and subsequent early growth, especially during their first and second dry, hot summers, because their downward-growing oak roots receive moisture from the perennial grass root mass. This root mass may go as deep as six to 15 feet. Young oak trees rely on their moisture until their own roots are able to extend even more deeply to reach permanent water. There is also a complex relationship between the microrhizomes of the grass roots and those of the oaks. The forest here is a deciduous one, interspersed with foothill pine, Pinus sabiniana, unlike the south-facing slopes, which is oak savanna. If one wanted to find a place with the most native species still surviving today, it would be the north-facing slopes. The ground moisture here is such that the more drought-tolerant Mediterranean invading plants do not take hold. Besides tule elk and pronged horn antelope, black-tailed deer, a subspecies of the mule deer, lives in the coast range. For the patween, it was another important food mammal which they hunted with bow and arrow. Into the valley of the Patween, the Berryessa family moved in 1842. They had come with wagons and cattle after being outfitted and supplied by General Vallejo himself, a service he rendered to many Mexican settlers in the area who lived east of San Francisco. The Berryessa brothers, Sisto and Jose de Jesus, arrived in the valley, which they claimed and subsequently named El Rancho de las Putas. 
The native bunch grasses were severely grazed down by the new cattle-owning settlers, with a lasting result, one that impacts us today, the establishment of large numbers of new, non-native annual grasses and thistles that opportunistically took root once the native perennials had been diminished or eliminated. The Bediessa's vast cattle ranch also had its ever-changing grazed land. What did not change were the trees and shrubs of the area, for introduction of foreign larger species had not occurred. 